Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. How Humanity Embarrassed One of the Galactic Superpowers. Written by Nuclear Justice 2. Humanity. A wonderful topic to talk about, especially in front of the Glotari. You can expect them to steam off from the room that you are currently residing in a rage and humiliation. And why do they do that? Because humans defeated the mighty Glotari Armada, which at the time had about 700 cruisers, with each one having lasers capable of cutting ships apart. How many ships humanity had? About a hundred. You might say that's impossible, no one could achieve that. And you are terribly wrong if you think that. To humans, the word impossible is nothing more than a mere challenge. But now, I answer the question you want. How do they manage to defeat them? The answer is simple. A human invention called... Mirror. End of story. Story number two. Upliftment written by I See What's New RP. Guru was curiously frustrated by this new species. He was the junior ambassador for the serene species, and yet it was constantly being thwarted in his attempts to obtain any information. The latest block was from his own Ed administrator, so all he could do was rustle his wings and clean an antenna. A third hand held the data slate, though he had long since committed everything to memory. Humans... A mammalian omnivorous species that has recently been found capable of FTL travel. Initial contact with their ambassador was one full cycle ago. A survey team was dispatched to the origin system of the FTL route, and the following was determined. Humanity currently spans one home planet, one planetary colony, and several mining colonies of varied types throughout the system. Their technology, though primitive, does show a remarkable redundancy for primary systems indicating a possible protect-the-herd mentality. Key points were reinforced with defensive measures, well, not dangerous to anything larger than a frigate. This indicates that predatory behavior might still be ingrained within their culture. Population of the home planet is around 2 billion members, with the rest of the system contributing similar numbers. Military is near barren, as indicated earlier, only by key weapon emplacements. Conclusion Inhabiting a system of vast, untapped, as of yet, resources, bringing the system into a fold will be of the utmost importance. Due to the lack of technology, the Council recommends the standard integration package. As a show of good faith, a data connection node was created and placed in human space, though it is of limited functionality. Garul was contemplating actually walking down with the visitor wing of the diplomatic halls, a truly desperate gambit. When his door chimed with an official visitor. Come in, he yelled. Ambassador Zyke walked in, antenna twitching in excitement. Ah, young Guru, come, it is time. The humans have come up with their official response. Not even giving him time to respond, the elder Serene turned and made his way out of Garul's limited office, wings twitching with excitement. Garul practically leapt over his desk in his excitement, hurrying towards the council chambers. I'm finally going to see a human he squealed in his mind, careful not to make a sound out loud. He didn't want to get banned from the hall. No one is this close. Entering the top of the hall, as was proper with one of the Trinity groups that had started the alliance, Garul made sure that he was out of the light of Ambassador Zyke while still maintaining a view. He could and would likely use the data slate to zoom in, but he wanted his first experience to be with his own eyes. He looked over the railing, through the four layers of ranking members until he saw at the bottom the illuminated platform for the human. Zyke struck a gong thrice, once for each of the trilogy, and in walked the human. Garou blinked several times, turning his head in confusion before looking at his data slate to confirm what he was seeing. The human looked like no other species that he had encountered. My beetle, of which nearly a third of the alliance was, wasn't too unexpected. No, it was the color of the human, so dark as to remind him of the moonless nights on Ceres Prime. And his teeth, 
the shocking witness of them clashed horribly. The only hair on the creature who claimed to be a mammal with two small tufts above the eyes and two rows of protective lids of said eyes. Greetings and welcome to the meeting of the Alliance. Today we are here to extend an offer of admittance to the newest race to achieve FTL travel and join their brethren in the stars. Welcome to the humans. Polite greeting noises were made at Zyke's address and the human bared his teeth and slightly lowered his head. Humanity would like to mirror your greeting, speaking on their behalf. I am Muhammad Ibn Abdurad. May our meeting bear fruits that all may enjoy. Garul tilted his head as he pondered the human. Interesting was the word he came up with. While meeting with unknown species, to open with a farming reference, but there was something about that first sentence... No doubt, the herbivorous species were already placated, but to mirror the greeting, a possible hidden warning to those who may be predatory. He rapidly blinked a few times, turning back into what Ambassador Zyke had been saying. All will be enjoyed, whatever fruit this meeting brings. However, there are several difficulties that are required to overcome before the fruit may be harvested. Indeed, for many fruits must be cultivated in trees for years before they bear fruit. So we have found a new species to be. So, human, can you tell us about how you are to repay us for years spent aiding humanity to reach our technological heights? Are we to be poor farmers struggling with a field for years, accumulating massive debt, and hope that in 20 or 30 cycles it may finally become profitable? The human narrowed its eyes and spoke. Of course not, Ambassador. However, you paint a very narrow picture of things. While we might not match you in certain aspects of science and technology, we do have a worth of knowledge on other subjects. Of course, of course, Zyke rudely interrupted, waving a claw at the human's argument. Likely things we too have researched. Let us face the facts, though. You have but one system. Your people inhabit only two planets. In order to uplift you, the Alliance would have to spend massive resources. Resources. That will need to be paid back. Here is what we refer to as a standard Alliance package. I'm sure you'll find it acceptable. The human looked at the data sheet for the longest time, tabbing through the pages and looking more and more distraught. Of course it did. With how the thing was structured, most species spent thousands of years paying off their debt, and these were the ones that had multiple systems. The poor humans would likely be indebted to the Alliance for the eternity under the compound interest, and that was being generous. Eventually, the human spoke again. Very well. I had hoped that it wouldn't come to this, as humanity came to this Alliance with open arms and friendly intentions. For the record... We reject this proposal in its entirety. Furthermore, as per Alliance Regulation 15.1a, I am hereby issuing a declaration of hostilities. Any species that comes to my office in the next ten days and offers friendly relations shall be exempted from hostilities. At the end of ten days, at ten in the morning standard time, any species of the Alliance that has not offered friendly relations shall be considered an antagonist. All such antagonists will be attacked to exactly two hours later. I'll be present in the hall at that time, ready to negotiate cessations of hostilities. With his warning given, the human swiveled on his feet and strode with purpose out of the room. Hostilities? You and what weapons? Zyke laughed at the retreating human, though I personally held some reservations. Ten days later, and the entire station was a buzz. Garul had heard through several of his contacts that the two herbivorous species and all three of the lower tier species had accepted the human's offer. That was fine, as no second tier or above members had even given the offer a passing thought. With those species contributing over 95% of the military might, the humans had no chance. He agitatedly checked his data state, seeing that it was one minute until the human's deadline. The council chamber was quiet and everyone had their eyes, or whatever site appendages they used, to their data slates. One minute passed. Two minutes. Three. 
At five minutes past the deadline, Drake started laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> so tell me, human, where is this tag of yours? <laughs> All of our shipyards are intact. All of our bases are fine. In fact, I don't see a single shot having been fired. The human was returned laughter sent chills through me. It was no booming thing. No, this, this was a low chuckling. Similar to chittering teeth of Sarkon hunting for larvae. <laughs> and what made you think that I was talking about attacking your military? The human asked. And everyone on the top tiers froze. If not the military, then what have you attacked? Your economy, the human replied. Your technology is really impressive. Unfortunately, your cyber warfare techniques are toddleresque at best. They took the children of our mining colonies, yes. What you think is our home planet is nothing more than a mining colony. Less than ten minutes to get around your blocks on a data node that you so helpfully left in place. You want to know what we attacked? Everything. All research and designs at your science centers are now ours, including military, I might add. All the knowledge required to uplift our technology so that it matches yours. We have. In its place, we have subtly altered specific things. Any new warships you may try and make will have fatal flaws. Hyperdrives won't work. Laser weapons won't have the capacitance to fire. Fuel economy will plunder. But that's not all. Every member species has their slush funds. Black holes where money goes to secret projects. Humanity thanks you for all these alliance credits. And the fact that you set a limit to trigger a transaction review at one billion credits. Your accounts were drained in seconds, sent through a dizzying set of numbered bank accounts, intermingled, dispersed, and intermingled again, until you would need a dedicated supercomputer to spend nearly 30 years to untangle it. Your military fleets will not receive orders unless we allow them. Your military won't be paid unless we allow it as we now control those accounts. Those who still call friends will notice that their crippling debt, no doubt loaded onto them the same way you tried to load onto humanity, has been paid in full. As you ambassadors can see, humanity has the power to mirror your acceptance into the Alliance. Would any member species wish to sit down and talk about being accepted into the newly formed Terran Alliance? End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Duck Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Ashtraya the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.